Welcome to Global Tax Talk. I'm Will Morris. Today we're focused on the Asia Pacific region. I'm joined by Chris Wu, who is PwC's Asia and Asia Pacific and Singapore tax leader. He's going to discuss the challenges which are impacting companies and how they're responding. So welcome, Chris. Thank you very much, Will. Good. So let's dive straight in. So the Asia-Pac region has now for a while been a powerhouse of economic prosperity, but like the rest of the world, um, there are heightened geopolitical tensions, there's inflation, supply chain fragility, and all of that stuff. There are new workforce challenges. How has Asia-Pac and how have the governments, what have they been doing to, to attract investment and to accelerate growth in this environment? Well, well, I mean, Asia-Pac is, is obviously a very big region. Yes. I mean, almost half the world's population is there. And uh, different economies, right, in terms mm -hmm. of the big manufacturing hubs like India, or like China. Right. Uh, then you have the developing countries. Um, Vietnam is one, uh, Thailand. Uh, and then you have some of the more mature economies as well, like Australia. Um, and then you have more unique hub countries, uh, Hong Kong and Singapore. So very diverse, yep. right? Um, but I think Asia is playing up to its strength. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that the demographics work in its favor in terms of the young population, uh, up and coming um, population in terms of consumers, and, and they're all, their spending power is increasing. Mm -hmm. So just Asia Pac by itself alone is a huge consumer right. group as well. Um, so that makes it all in terms of it all attractive. Mm -hmm. You have a good, strong young workforce, um, big consumer market. Um, really, in terms of what's happening around the world, I think Asia still remains attractive because yeah. of th these reasons. Okay. Good. Okay, so now let's dive into tax a little bit, because obviously okay. that's what we're really here to talk about. Um, pillar 2, the, uh, the, the famous Pillar 2, um, is taking center stage uh, across the world. Uh, and some Asia-Pac countries have uh, begun to enact Pillar 2, Japan, South Korea, Australia, and yes, Singapore. Uh, on the other hand, China, uh, India, and the Philippines have been noticeably quiet. So what do you think may happen going forward? Um, more countries in the region are going to participate, I assume. What are companies doing to, um, to prepare for that, in particular this, this rising compliance burden, um, which just seems to go up and up and up? Well, I, I think the biggest thing, as you've pointed out, Will, is the compliance yeah. burden. And behind the compliance burden is obviously a huge amount of data which is mm -hmm. quite required. But I think Pillar 2 itself is just highlighting the fact that in our overall tax world, the compliance burden is just increasing. Right. Oh, you have governments who obviously post-COVID need more revenue. Um, you have various requirements in terms of uh, outside tax, mm -hmm. but links very much to tax around right. sustainability, as an example. Um, all this needs to be reported in its various forms. And it's the one source of truth, the, the, the right. data behind it, is I think the key, key yeah. part. Yeah. Um, so while I, I think corporates are focusing on, yes, these are the requirements yeah. needed, uh, I think there's a need for them to step back and understand that it's actually um, a bigger challenge in terms of being able to meet all these requirements. But actually, the solution in, in a way is simpler in terms of if you're focusing on how data is actually uh, managed, how right. the data is curated, yep. um, and being able to then supply from that one source of data into the various reporting uh, right. requirements. So I think there's a huge learning curve, yep. which we're trying to help our clients get over. It's not about focusing on the on the ends, you actually have to focus on the means right. in terms of then, how do you actually get there, what you actually have to deal with. Yep. And of course, techno ultimately technology right. is gonna be um, the key solution. Right. And just a, a quick follow up on that. Um, I mean, do you see most corporations, at least corporations in scope, obviously, to, to be clear, do you see most corporations actually accepting this is going to be happening and preparing, or is there still an element of denial uh, in some quarters? I, th I think the denial is, is still there. Yep. Uh, but the denial comes through mainly from just not understanding the enormity sure. of it. Yep. Uh, I think if you ask any board member, mm -hmm. any audit committee, uh, they're going to be able to give you the right answers. Right. Um, but unfortunately, that when it comes to the delivery side, right. and when you ask um, people who are in the trenches, yep. they're going to say, well, we, we don't really have enough resources. Yep. Um, so it, it's it's that gap. It, it's not so much, again, denial, yep. but it's just trying to bridge a gap sure. between the decision makers and those who are having to deliver in yep. terms of reporting. Okay, that, that's, that's really helpful. 
Okay, so let's let's move on, still in tax, but let's talk about sustainability um, for a second. And there are, again, lots of governments in the Asia-Pac region, and Singapore, I think, has been a leader in this, um, who are looking to, you know, secure that sustainable future. Um, there has arisen an issue with the EU in relation to the Carbon Border Adjustment mm. Mechanism, uh, or CBAM, and, uh, you know, companies feeling they may be negative effect, neg negatively affected, sorry, um, how are companies thinking about that? Are they rethinking strategy? Are they rethinking supply chains? That type of stuff. I mean, how are people dealing with sustainability, particularly with that EU issue, but actually more generally? Sure. I think I think the CBAM issue is, been, is being driven a lot by actually the, the clients and customers in Europe. Okay. Because they understand, hang on, it's going to be a lot more expensive yep. to, to buy from countries which don't meet the same standards of right. what the EU is putting Right. Some call it in terms of some sort of tariff or barrier, but mm -hmm. actually all you're trying to do is create that level playing field. Right. Right. Um, but I think apart from CBAM, and as I said, many, many companies are preparing for it. They're trying to improve um, some of their scope one, two and three um, so that it to reduce the, the actual taxation right. behind it. Um, but again, it comes back to what we earlier spoke about, the border reporting as well, yep. relating to uh, CSRD, which yep. The EU is also facing that as long as you have some sort of presence in the, in the EU, mm -hmm. actually a lot of Asia-Pacific countries, I think, are going to be affected by it. Right. Um, and, and again, coming back to whether it's a, a gap in the knowledge or deniability, it's something that we are trying to, of course, work with our, right. our, our clients to understand it. But before I move away from sustainability, I think the immediate ones, issues um, which are, I'm seeing around Asia-Pacific are, are related to actually infrastructure, which people are trying to change. Sure. And tax can play a vital part in it in terms mm -hmm. of obviously capital raising, yep. working together. Um, in terms of looking at some introductions of carbon taxes, which uh, Singapore is, is one of the leaders in terms of yep. um, introducing it. Um, so ag again, it's um, early stages of where tax is being a crucial um, player around the whole sustainability movement. Right. But again, um, like most tax people, the unsung heroes. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, look, let's be honest about it. Um, resources are limited. Um, people are, you know, having having to deal with more and more and more. And we can talk about technology, um, you know. So in the short term, some of this is just, you know, how do we cover this? How do we do that, you know, manually if we have to, uh, digitally if we can do. But then in the longer term, people are, are, are really looking to to a bigger transformation to, uh, you know, to survive, to get ahead, to actually improve. Uh, and what do you see in terms of um, in terms of that, and not just at the tax level, but also at the board level, you know, the C-suite level. How are people actually looking to revamp their business models? Um, in terms of the broader business models, it, it is really around trying to see how what you can do, basically more with, with less. Right. Um, and I have to come back still to the te technology solutions. Yep. Um, I think when it comes back to to the need for us to upgrade, upskill our, our people, um, I mean, I, I don't think it's so much for the decision makers, as long as you understand the broad concept, mm -hmm. but the people who are actually executing it, yep. uh, there is a serious need for that transformation. And do you, do you see that appetite in the tax department, for example, in relation to upping the game on tax? Well, I definitely see it from the tax authority's perspective. Okay. I, I had the privilege to attend a forum recently, which was hosted in Singapore, mm -hmm. and they did say the one thing you have to transform within tax authorities is around technology. Right being able to have the data, doing the data analytics, and they're going to come to us with the audits based on that. Yep. So we need to respond in, in similar forms um, and to advise our clients as to how they can do it. Because um, I, I just do not see an alternative to it. Frankly, Excel is not technology. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. This, this has been uh, great. Uh, you were right to point out Asia Pac is a very important part of the world economy. Um, and there are some areas of the world where we tend to ignore that um, a little more than we should do. So, as I say, this has been really useful. I will look forward to getting back together with you again. I will come to your part of the world the next time uh, and do the interview there. But thank you very much for joining me. And thank you for joining us. And stay with us on Global Tax Talk so that you are global tax ready.